All right, with that, are you ready for some advice and wisdom? Of course. Then you're in luck because up next we're going to hear from our fairy pod mother Margaret Carey in her Ask Tink segment. Hello, Skywalkers. This is Margaret Carey, the official fairy pod mother on Skywalking Through Neverland. Some of you may even know me as the animator's reference model for Tinkerbell in Walt Disney's original Peter Pan film. I am here to give advice and wisdom and spread to you my faith, trust, and pixie dust. (laughs) Or if you just want to ask me a question about my career or anything from Tinkerbell's point of view, then I'm here for you too. Let's start things off today with a question from... Chicka fan. So, Chicka, uh, boy or girl, do you imagine? Okay, Uh, he or she who asks, what are your thoughts in all the changes made to the two U.S.-based Disney theme parks, which will bring new lands and experience to the masses? Ah, so when's your graduation? I mean, you use words beautifully. I think it's wonderful. I think it's absolutely marvelous to reach out. And a lot has to do with one of the reasons that I was chosen to cast as Tinkerbell. Because I can hardly wait to see what's around the corner. What's new? I love the old. Don't misunderstand. I love the old. And I praise it and all the rest. But with the imagination that the Disney people have, I can hardly wait. I mean, it's a gift. It's a real, really a gift. And one day, I was riding with some folks, though this was a few years ago, they were picking me up from the airport in Florida, and I was driving to another town where I was going to a Disneyana club to, to do a show. And these two men were sitting up in front, and I was sitting in the back seat, and they were telling me, each other what was wrong with Disneyland. Uh, they were telling, now, they're in Florida, but they're telling them on Disneyland. And they're, oh, yes, the, well, they did away with this. Well, they couldn't do that. Well, they should have done this, that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I finally spoke up, and I said, well, at least you don't have to travel to the West Coast then. And they looked at me, you know, over their shoulders and said, why not? I said, well, you don't go to Disneyland, do you? Well, yeah, twice a year. I said, you've just spent 20 minutes telling me what's wrong with it. Why would you do that? Well, no, it's it's this, that. And I said, well, stop it. It's the most wonderful place on earth. And just enjoy and stop tearing it down to other people. And they turned around and said, yes, ma'am. I love it when you're older. You can get away with all kinds. So I just think it's fabulous. Sometimes they miss, but maybe 1%. Oh, come on. you got to give them a little slack. So thank you for that question, Chick of Fant. <laughs> I love that. Next up, let's hear from Rachel Hayes, who asks, Who's your favorite fairy other than Tink? Mine is Rosetta. I'm sorry if we've already answered this question. I've never heard the answer. Well, I've thought through the question, Rachel. I don't think I have answered it before because um, actually Tinkerbell is very, very fond of one particular character with the fairies, and that is Queen Clarion. Tinkerbell, who bounces around, and she just admires the queen so. With her, her beautiful regalness, I guess is the best. And how she, uh, she has pixie dust around her all the time. And she's so calm. And Tinkerbell, of course, it isn't. She's just the opposite of Tinkerbell on the nicest scale. So, and the other thing is, Rachel... You know what it is when you've got a group of girls together? You can't like one better than the other. You just can't. It doesn't really, really work out too well. So Tinkerbell has just bypassed any of those problems. And you know what? When they first started out together, 
there was an unnamed fairy who was not liked very much, but that has changed quite a bit. That was one of the lessons that they had to learn. So Queen Clarion, whose name means trumpeter, she is the one who signals and is at the head of a procession. And Tinkerbell just thinks she's grand. (laughs) Thank you, Rachel. Now, Mike Hammond, it sounds like a detective, doesn't it? Mike Hammond. I think there was a radio detective. I think so. Well, he wrote in and wants to know, when you were modeling as Tinkerbell, did you have issues with unwelcome advances? If so, how did you deal with it? Well, I never had one little bit of problem when I was modeling for Tinkerbell. Believe me, on sound stages of, in other studios, yes. Uh, although the Lone Ranger, when I did that show with all rough and tough crew and cast, um, Clayton Moore and Jay Silver Hills, they sat me down and chatted with me so I never interfaced with that cast or crew. They were looking after me. Uh, I was not really looked after over at RKO. They called me Miss Sex over there when they tried to change, which they did. They changed my name when the picture was over. Um, They were like junior high schoolers. But at Disney, I will tell you, I talked to Catherine Beaumont about this also. And Catherine said the same thing. She said she never heard an untoward word. Mr. Davis would not put up with it. Jerry Geronimi would not put up with it. Of course, we didn't walk around in our one-piece bathing suits, you know. Uh, It was the time when we wore cover-ups, and we were very aware of what was going on. But dang, I was cute, you know. If I'd walked around in in, at Columbia, who would have known? But anyway, no, thank you for the question, because it was all male crew. Uh, It was a very different time, and we've come a long way, baby, and I really, really appreciate it. Women in Film, the organization hadn't even been put together yet. So uh, that was uh, Mr. Detective. That sounds like a detective would ask that question. And now finally, a question from Denise Power, and has a pressing question. What is more powerful, the pixie dust or the happy thoughts? Well, you use them in different ways, so they're equal. Pixie dust is what you shower on everyone else, and you get some of it blown back on you. Happy thoughts are for you. When you wake up in the morning and you say, oh, I got to do this, that, or the other, no, no. I get to do this, that, or the other. I get to go see that. I get to look at different flowers. You sound like a ninny to yourself, but you know what? Happy thoughts work. I have a story in my new book, Tinkerbell Talks, Tales of a Pixie-Dusted Life. This woman walked up to me, and she was trim, about 35, I guess, darn little pixie haircut, and she was shaking, and she was crying. And I thought, "Uh uh-oh, And she said, you and Tinkerbell saved my life. And I thought, "Uh (laughs) uh-oh. And I said, really? And I'm holding her hand, and it's shaking. She said, yes, about two, three years ago, I weighed 300 pounds, and I had to have both knees replaced. And I was in a wheelchair. I was so depressed, I just wanted to die. She said, I have to do something. I've got to think happy thoughts. So she had Tinkerbell tattooed on her lower leg in color. Beautiful job. Pretty good size. I'd say maybe a nine inch. So it wasn't small. And she said, every time that I thought I, a, a, a bad thought, I'd put my leg out and say, nope, happy thoughts. And then her daughter gave me two pictures, which are in the book. And she said, this was my mother. This is exactly what happened. Tinkerbell and you saved my mother's life. So 
That's what happy thoughts are so powerful. You use them. Now, it bubbles over. (laughs) You can't help that, poor thing. But it bubbles over with pixie dust. So they're both powerful. You use them. And remember that James M. Berry, who wrote the book in 1904, uh, the play and the book in 1911, and I have a quote from him that opens up my book, which I'd like to give you. And the quote is, Memories are God's way of giving you roses in December. And he knew all about pixie dust, and he knew all about happy thoughts way back then. So remember, you have power every day that you wake up, and so does Tinkerbell. So I guess, Skywalkers, that's all. Yep. That's all the tink time we have for today. I would like to thank Chickafant. I'm not laughing. Um, Chickafant, Rachel Hayes, Mike Hammond, and Denise Power for sending in their questions and concerns. If you would like me to spread some faith, trust, and pixie dust, send your questions to share at skywalkingthroughneverland.com. Bye now.